Do you ever find yourself wishing your life were different than it is? If only we could wave a magic wand and fix the annoying job, the inconsiderate friend, or the distant partner. But we can't. The good news is, we don't need to. Chuck Hillig, author of the audiobook Seeds for the Soul, Living as the Source of Who You Are, shares a profound insight. The key to living your best life isn't outside you. It's within you. Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. Each week we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash yourgreatjourney. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Today, we have a conversation with psychotherapist and spiritual teacher Chuck Hillick. Chuck is the author of the audiobook Seeds for the Soul, Living as the Source of Who You Are, a genre-bending mixture of poetry and prose that explores spirituality, life, and our own deepest source. This audiobook is an effervescent, joyful collection of inspiring philosophical thoughts. You can come back again and again to Seeds for the Soul and find something new and nourishing each time. In this interview, Chuck speaks to those of us who are looking to take control of our lives and escape the feelings of helplessness that often plague periods of stress and pain. He believes that you are the source of your life and that when you begin to look at your feelings and experiences differently, they begin to change for the better. Chuck inspires us to explore our own vast potential and start taking ownership of our lives. The story about how I came to write it probably began way back in the mid-70s. I had lots of insights at that time. I was kind of in a creative place. And I noticed that I had the urge to start writing down on little scraps of paper, some insights and some thoughts. And I would have these little notebooks all over the place around the house. And I would write down these little things that would show up. But I particularly found a lot of good information coming in that hypnagogic state between waking and sleeping or sleeping and waking, when you're in that limbo state, a lot of stuff would just bubble up there at that time. And what I would do is with my eyes closed, I'd just reach over there and I'd write down a few words or a phrase and then go back to sleep. And then at the end of the day, I'd kind of gather them up and then I'd go to my computer and be like harvest time. And I'd look at a lot of those and a lot of those were just, eh, not, not so much, but some I considered to be really interesting. So I would flesh those out, and then I would start to make a book. And it just kept on accumulating over the days and weeks and months and years. I had a stack of these four by six cards of this information that had come on through me or that I'd thought about or been inspired to write. I went through each and every one of those, and I distilled them. And so I got it down to just the core and then I put it all together. And that's, that's how the story of Seeds for the Soul came to be. When I put all of these ideas together, they kind of naturally grouped around 20 or 21 different, for lack of a better term, chapters. And the names of some of the chapters, maybe give it away, um, Life as a Game, I called one of them, or Is Freedom Even Possible? Or Can You Ever Really Be Happy? love, relationships, and therapy, consciousness, who needs it? I did not structure the book in a way where it was going to be sequential. So it was not like A, B, C, D, E, like most other books are, are structured. What I was trying to do was to actually cast a wide net, a net that would include both the practicality of hardcore Western psychology and psychotherapy, along with the softer wisdom of, of Eastern philosophy. And so that's what really made the book very unique, because I was trying to blend both of those and point out that what both of those 
seemingly different poles were pointing at was really one and the same, but they were coming at it from a different place. I was and am a state licensed psychotherapist in California since 1978. So a whole lot of my training had been along that psychotherapeutic modality there that I use. And so I recognized that many of the people that would come to me in a, in a therapeutic way, maybe 80 to 85% of them had certain self-defeating beliefs that I wanted to speak to in this book. And the number one self-defeating belief that a whole lot of people would have was this one. Somehow other people, places, things could make them feel certain things. Other people could make them angry. Other people could hurt their feelings. That they disempowered themselves and said, no, other people are doing this to me and that I'm feeling victimized by this. And so a whole lot of what I did in therapy was to encourage them to consider the possibility that they were the true source, that they were responsible. There's no fault, there's no blame, but they were the source, they are the source of their own experience in life. And to own that, and in their courage to own that, that's great power. Because the power then comes from, hey, whatever I acknowledge that I'm creating in my life, I also am acknowledging that I can uncreate these things if I don't like them anymore. But if it is happening to me from the outside, I'm pretty much stuck with it until they, whoever the they would be, start doing something different to, with, or for me. Yeah, we, we attract those things that, that we say no to. Um, it's been commonly phrased as whatever you resist in life will persist. It will persist because you are, in a sense, going to war with life. And when you go to war with life, life is a way of turning it around and going to war with you. So the message then in, in a lot of my therapy and, and certainly in this book is you have to own it all. You have to own your own dream because whatever it is that you're not willing to own owns you. And if you're not willing to own your own fear, then fear in a sense owns you or your anger owns you at some point. So you have to just open your arms even more and just embrace yourself in all of your wonderfulness, as well as with all of your warts too. But just to love it without condition or qualification whatsoever. One of the great things that's available to everyone is to look at things differently. Because when you change how you're looking at things, the things that you're looking at will begin to change. One of the ways that I encourage people to use these things in the book is to recognize that, hey, there's no such thing as a bad feeling or even as a good feeling. So don't label feelings as being either good or bad, because if you label them as, oh, I'm having this bad feeling, then you, by association with this so-called bad feeling, become bad in and of yourself through your connection, through your association with them. And people say, well, what should I call them then? I don't like this feeling. Say, fine, call it an uncomfortable feeling. Call these comfortable feelings. But if you separate them into comfortable and uncomfortable, you're gonna be a lot more willing to be with them and not to resist them because Nobody wants to be having bad feelings because then you become a bad person for having these bad feelings. And you can say the same thing about thoughts too. No such thing as a bad thought, just an uncomfortable thought or a thought that doesn't help you and doesn't assist you, doesn't, doesn't support you. So one of the things is to reframe from being bad feelings to uncomfortable feelings. Another possibility is for people to recognize that all of life's situations and events that are coming at them, they're not happening to them at all. They're actually happening for them. That the universe, that consciousness itself is not out to hurt you, it's out to teach you. It's out to point out things that you are currently unconscious about. But its motives are essentially benign, which means it's really trying to align itself with you 
as long as you say yes to it. So make yes your default position in life. Just say yes to it. You don't have to understand it or figure it out, but just embrace it all. There's a part of you that wants to awaken to your own divinity. And that part of you is the very path that you're walking. You're walking on the very path. There's nothing that you have to do to say, oh, I'm, I'm lost. I, you know, I, I have to go off to India or I have to sit on this mountaintop. No, whatever it is that you're doing, however it is that your life is unfolding, is exactly the path that you yourself have chosen to awaken you to your own divinity. The message, I suppose, is to ask yourself better questions. The question that a lot of people unfortunately ask is, why are these things happening to me and feeling very victimized as a result of it? And flip that over to how can I use these things? How can I awaken myself to my own divinity? What is the universe trying to teach me? So when you ask yourself better questions, you're going to end up with better answers. I am convinced after, you know, having read this book, lived with this book for these years, and talked to many people who have had very, very positive experiences of it, they have written me about how impactful it has been. The book is so rich in many, many things that would be available to change people, not only psychologically, but spiritually in their own heart of hearts. Thanks for listening to this conversation with Chuck Hillig, author of the audiobook Seeds for the Soul, Living as the Source of Who You Are. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy the show. Thanks for listening. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash your great journey.